learning a few basic martial art moves to never be scared again. Maite Orsini is a congresswoman from the Democratic Revolution Party for the 9th District of Santiago. She attends a self-defense workshop in this working class area of the city. We're fighting so that young Chilean women can walk the streets without being scared. Unfortunately, as long as we're not able to build a feminist society where this is the norm, we'll have to equip women and young girls with the tools to be independent, to be able to defend themselves in the case of an attack. The neighborhood girls are clearly excited about this initiative. We're members of a local organization in Cerro Navia. We've experienced violence in the street when we leave our meetings. So I think learning self-defense is a good way to be able to get out of difficult situations. It's our responsibility to learn how to defend ourselves. And that's why we wanted to come here as a group with all the girls. In 2021, more than 40 Chilean women have already died from domestic violence. Maite wants to push forward concrete initiatives that will protect young girls and women across the country. Today, we're launching a proposal called the Women's Police Stations. There are similar initiatives in countries like Argentina and Brazil, and even all the way in South Africa, where there are specialized police stations run only by women, and who tend to victims of violence without blaming them, and who trust the victims when they come to report their aggressors. In October 2019, widespread protests took place in Chile over inequality and elitism. These angry social uprisings led to the election of a constituent assembly with gender parity. This assembly's goal is to rewrite the constitution inherited from General Augusto Pinochet's dictatorship. Many feminists are among the members of this assembly they are determined to limit the privileges of the elite and bury Chile's patriarchal foundations. Our main goal as feminists is to write a feminist constitution. It's an ambition that goes beyond just stipulating the number of women in a room. It has to do with deep transformations on a structural level, but also on socio-political and cultural levels. We want to bridge the gap between men and women, but also do away with hierarchical positions in society that have created differences and that translate into social inequality between men, women and other excluded groups. In Chile, the recent rise of conservatism has feminists worried. As the second round of the presidential election draws near, far-right candidate Jose Antonio Cast is only one step away from being elected. Women fear this would be a massive blow to their cause. We've gathered here to protest against the rise in hate speech, negationist, far-right and neo-fascist speech that's beginning to appear in our country. We want to say that we outnumber them, that we're the majority. When we look to the future, we see a country of human rights, dignity, equality and liberty. A country free from hateful violence that denies people their rights. That day, protesters have one clear message. Building a new Chile can't be done without women. We're a fundamental part of the present and of the future of our country. Without us, without feminism, without full equality and the recognition of diversity, it won't be possible to build a democracy. There's still a long road ahead for Chilean feminists, but through years of determination, they've already greatly rejuvenated their country's politics.